Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director, and I'm here with Bible teacher Duffy Robbins, who just brought an important message about unity from unity. Ephesians. Yes, well, welcome back, Duffy. Thanks, Luann. Always Great glad to, be here. to have you back. Appreciate it. And you got your summer look looking nice. Yeah, and, yeah, it's my summer look. Yeah. <laughs> nice and tan. Yeah. Uh, well, I've been love, in the booth for hours. <laughs> good. Yeah, I'm glad that you uh, yeah. brought your summer look here yeah. for us. Uh, it was great to have you back. Thank you. Um, and uh, you've continued uh, this theme of revival and seeing the Holy Spirit move um, and kind of drilling down into that even maybe a little bit more by bringing this message from right. Ephesians. Mm -hmm. um, and when we talk about the unity of the body, uh, the question that we came, that came in today, I think, is one that is often asked. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, <laughs> it says to be in unity is one. How do we do that when there is a different perspective or interpretation of scripture that has impact on a large group of people? Is disagreement uh, between two when the truth is sought to be held on both sides? And I'm not talking about gospel or salvation, but other doctrines. How do we maintain unity in the body with these different interpretations or perspectives? Right. Well, um, there is a there's an expression, often attributed to Augustine, but but not actually <clears throat> his, uh, but cited by a number of people. It goes way way back. Um, in the uh, in the statement, I pulled it up on my phone. Is in essentials unity, in non essentials liberty, in all things charity, and, and this is basically a statement that's trying to answer precisely that question. Um, this question seems to be saying, I'm not talking about essentials. I'm not talking about, it says gospel and salvation. So, I mean, so in other words, there are certain issues where our unity is rooted. Uh, one Lord, one, you know, one faith, one baptism. And that's not necessarily saying one mode of baptism, you know, some dunk, some sprinkle, some dry clean, whatever. That it, it, but the fact that we are baptized in the Spirit of God, baptized by the Holy Spirit, uh, one God, those are essentials. And so we would not be able to maintain unity with people who believed there was more than one God or that there was more than one Lord. I heard a preacher say one time that there are seven ones in that passage. I mentioned this today. But what I didn't say, the observation the preacher made is at the heart of those seven ones, in other words, there's seven, the middle of the seven, the core of the seven is one Lord. And, um, and so I would think that the absolute essential about which we must agree is, is Christology, who is Jesus, who is the Christ, and that he came in the flesh, and that he's the son of God. That's, that's where our unity is rooted. That's where it starts. So, um, so if there's not agreement on that, then I think it would be really, really hard for us to talk about uh, unity of the spirit. Um, having said that, there are other issues, of course. I mentioned baptism is one of them. Uh, you know, how does baptism actually happen? Or another one that Christians have, uh, you know, talked about over the years is, is the Lord's return? Is it going to be mm -hmm. before? Times, yeah, you know, things, that yeah. kind of stuff. Another issue about which uh, there's disagreement is uh, how, what happens when you die? Do you immediately, as Paul seemed to imply in Philippians, are you immediately absent from the body and present with the Lord? Which sounds like if I were to die during this podcast, by you know after lunch I'd be in heaven. Or uh, in Thessalonians, where Paul says the dead in Christ will rise first when the Lord comes back. So you go, well, wait a minute, I thought the dead are already there. So there's disagreement. You know, there's disagreement on issues like that. And those kind of things, we won't know until we won't know. Well, well that's what I was going to say. I think a big part of this. Is, is sort of captured in that sort of non-essentials. In other words, those are not, as the questioner observed, those are not questions on which our salvation is based. I could be wrong on those issues, but my salvation is not at stake. If I'm wrong about Jesus and his, his death on the cross on my behalf, that's wrong enough to have eternal consequence. But being wrong about baptism uh, is not is not a big deal. So, so um, I think those are the kind of issues on which, as this statement 
suggest we should give people liberty. And a part of that liberty, I think, is anchored in the fact, a very simple idea, is that I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Having said that, the other side of the coin is that that, um, that doesn't mean we all walk around uh, saturated in, in doubt. That we don't have to say, well, who knows? It might be right, it might be wrong. In fact, I, 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 I always kind of wince a little bit when, when in a Bible study, we're reading the Bible, and someone will, you know, will just go around the circle, what does that mean to you? What does that mean to you? What does that mean to you? As if whatever it means, whatever you think it means, that's what it means. Um, because because uh, scripture is intended to teach us certain things and certain things it is not intended to teach us. If someone means by that, how does that apply to your life? How does that apply to your life? Granted, there, there's lots of different ways. But I think what um, we need to do is to, is to, 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 to sort of maintain our unity and how do, we, how do we figure out disputes like this on these matters? And which ones are essential as we go back and we look at the creeds of the church um, and we also p uh, heed the tradition of the church. And when I say tradition, you know, a lot of people go, oh, you mean like we have to wear a tie on Sunday or we have to, you know, go to lunch at uh, a, a nice place. But when we talk about tradition in this sense, we're talking about what have our brothers and sisters in Christ for 2,000 years around the world, mm -hmm. what have been their consensus of opinion? And, and, and actually, the Holy Spirit has a DNA, he has a history. So, so throughout history, the Holy Spirit has guided the church into our unity and into these truths. So, so I would, when I say I'm wrong, I might be wrong. I don't want to say I might be wrong, but I think 2,000 years of my brothers and sisters in Christ are wrong. I would say I might be wrong, therefore, I'm going to defer to the tradition of the church. Mm -hmm. And this is a really important issue uh, right now in the church because, because uh, it, it's, it's kind of a pseudo humility to say, well, I know I'm taking a position that the church has never taken before and I might be wrong. But that's really arrogance because you're really saying, I outvote all of them because I'm alive and they're dead. I'm more inclined to say, hey, let's, in humility, on these issues about which we don't know, let's yield to the tradition of the church. So, um, and, and, then, and then regardless of the position, we need to show charity to those with whom we disagree, which is hard. Yeah, it's it, hard. it is, but making space and room to be okay that we yeah. don't agree, yeah. but we could still right. live in harmony and, and yeah. unity. Yeah, yeah, at least in, in Kindness. Mm -hmm. um, in other words, I, I think <clears throat> it would be possible for, for, I think it's not only possible, I think it's likely that one could say, I cannot, I cannot really say I'm in union with that group of people. But that doesn't give me the right to be mean to that or rude to that group of people. I need to show to them uh, charity. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, one of the hardest, one of the things I'm, I'm really wrestling with myself right now is precisely this issue. Because I want to, because I, like I, if, let's say you and I really disagreed on an issue that was a pretty important issue. And I want to be kind to you, but at the same time, I want to be careful about being unified with you because I might think that that unity would mislead a younger or weaker Christian to believe that, that I think your position is right. And so I'm not necessarily worried even about your salvation or about, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that, but I'm worried about someone else hearing something that is, that is really wrong and could be harmful to them. And so I, 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 I think I call it thinking like a youth pastor, but I do sometimes feel this pastoral concern that gets in the way and it makes me take, see the stakes higher on some issues than I probably should, but well, that, 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 I struggle with that a little well, bit. Well, I think your transparency in this struggle that is something that we all feel, and increasingly 
Yeah. So, right. um, and so I think it's super helpful that you're open about that um, and that we dialogue about it and yeah. that we make space for that. It's been helpful talking to you about it. Yeah, well, good. I'm glad, I'm glad you came today. It was super helpful. So tell us about next week. Give us a, can next you give us a preview week. or a peek into next week? Oh, yeah, yeah. In Ephesians chapter 4, the passage we looked at today, Paul says, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you've been called. And then he has the word with, with all loneliness or humility and meekness, with patience or long suffering, forbearing one another in love, be eager to maintain the unity of the spirit. So, so I basically took verse three, be eager to maintain the unity of the spirit because that's what he's really telling them to do. Mm -hmm. But in verse two, he tells them how, how to, to do, do it. it. Okay. And that's what I'm gonna talk about next week. Well, we can't wait. Glad you were here today. Ah, that's awesome. Glad you're going to be back. <laughs> Thank you. And Me too. we'll see you back here next week for Postscript as well. Have a great Thank week. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.